Hi everybody, I'm Daniel Gilbert here for jamplay.com. Going to continue with major 251 soloing possibilities. Again, this is part of the advanced improvisation exercises. And the major 251 progression is a big part of a traditional jazz music. And some contemporary pop music definitely contains this progression. So last time we were talking about uh, really playing over this progression sort of diatonically with a little bit of chromatic passing tone in the scale. What I'd like to do this time is go a little bit deeper and now give you some alterations and some dissonance over the five chord. Now, why do we do that? A lot of jazz players alter the five chord. Now, alter means to add, uh, chord, add altered chord tones. An altered chord tone to G7 is a sharp or flat five and a sharp or flat nine. So, here is a non-altered two, five, one. Now we'll alter the five chord. Hear that again. So you hear that slight dissonance? What that slight dissonance does is it just pushes to the one chord. It just kind of pushes to the one chord. So I always say it's like a little bit of itchiness and then it gets resolved when you go to the one chord. Now there are many, many ways that you can produce that itchiness and then a nice release to the listener. Some, uh, some players call it tension and release. Create some tension in the listener and then settle it by resolving to a good chord tone or scale note. So now our first technique for doing this will sort of be kind of simple actually. Now you guys know the major and minor scale. So the first thing, little trick, is that when the five chord comes on and you want to alter it, you play the one chord minor scale. Okay, so this would mean you play the key of C. Now over this chord, you play C minor. And then you go back and play C major. Now, why can you do that? Because I told you. No, really, you should have a little bit more reason than that. The C minor scale contains some of those altered tones over the G7. Okay, it has a flat nine and a sharp nine, it has a sharp five. So it catches it very nicely. So now see if you can hear it. I'm gonna play C major over the D minor seven chord. I'm gonna play C minor over the G7 chord, and then I'll return to the C major scale. You starting to hear that? Some of you might have said, hey, that's starting to sound like the jazz that I listen to, not that real super diatonic stuff, but now I'm kind of hearing that itchiness that you're talking about. So again, really simple way to do it. In this, in this key, just play C minor over the G7 chord. In any key, play the one minor scale over the five chord you want to alter, okay? We're in the key of C, over G7, play C minor. Now, of course, you should be able to do that everywhere. Let me just pick this up a little bit and run through the patterns and show you that.
Okay, so you're hearing that? Now again, this is why uh, I really kind of pound on you guys to really, really know your basic tools. When you're really, really fluid in your major scales and minor scales and pentatonics, then when it's really easy to apply them. I can say, hey, move this over here, move this up a half step, and you can apply it and immediately get that sound, okay? All right, so now the next step is to bring in the melodic minor scale. Now, it's gonna sound kind of similar to the C minor, but it, it contains a tone which really lets the listener hear the dominant seven chord a little bit more. So the key here is this. On your G7 chord, move up a half step and play the melodic minor scale. So for G7 altered sounds, play A flat melodic minor scale. Now that actually is another scale that's called G altered. And I'm just trying to give you some quickie sort of street solutions to get at these sounds. Uh, but really, I wouldn't be a, a really good teacher if I didn't say that is the altered scale, but I'm giving you a little cheaty formula, okay? So I hope you know the melodic minor fingerings. And again, we have a two, five, one in C and on G seven, I'm playing a flat melodic minor. I'm going to do this really slowly and see if, you can see it. jump up here to another place. Now, unconsciously, I'm really doing, you know, what I think are tasty resolutions. And the key to that, at least for now, gentlemen and madams, is to get that melodic minor scale in the same pattern you're playing, well, in this instance, the C major scale in. So when I was up here, played C major, and A flat melodic minor, move up one fret, here's A flat melodic minor with the roots in the five and two. Ah, uh, now there you could really hear that kind of really standard, kind of fat Joe Pass kind of, Okay, now as a slight little aside, this has nothing to do with what we were just talking about. I'm gonna get back to that. You might have noticed me doing these little kind of flutter things. Little kind of hammer on, I call them ornamentations. That really sounds nice in jazz to be able to do that. And just make them sort of very easy physically on the guitar, they're on the same string. Okay, well, I really overdid it on that last one. But that really gives kind of a really loosey-goosey kind of feel, like real slick. So even slowly in the beginning, if you can throw some of those in, you're gonna sound a little bit more pro, okay? So, so far, we have uh, playing on, on the, in this key in C, on the G7 chord, playing a C minor scale. And that's a C natural minor, not Dorian. Now, this last thing that we just did was playing the melodic minor scale a half step up from the root of the altered chord you want to play over. Okay, then we just did that in a couple of places. So, uh, hopefully you know your melodic minor fingerings. And now let's kind of maybe just sort of mix that up a little bit with a little flutter thing. One, two, three, four.
Now, hopefully you're sitting there saying, wow, he makes it look really easy. So that means I can do it. And if I've done that, like, woo, you know, mission accomplished. You know what? It sort of is easy if you spend the time and play around and really listen. Now, again, I'm really uh, uncomfortable with my fingerings, so I can sort of improvise with fingerings. That might be a little bit tricky for you at this point. But again, set the metronome at a slow enough tempo that you can really accomplish that cleanly. And then move it up maybe every two weeks or something like two or three beats per minute, not 10. It's almost imperceptible. You almost don't even feel like it's faster, but by the number you are faster. And if you keep doing that for months, then the progress really comes and you build your speed in, in, in a really good way and everything is clean. Okay, now last thing for uh, alteration things. Now this you can do on any of the chords in the 2-5-1. This is a little bit tricky. It involves the arpeggio. And again, I probably should take time and, and, and shoot like four or five lessons on this, but I'm just gonna throw it out to you. And the idea is this, we have the arpeggio. <laughs> And what you're going to do is you're going to use the note a half step below the note in the arpeggio. It's called the lower chromatic neighbor. I call it the LCN. Okay, the lower chromatic neighbor. Now, when you use the lower chromatic neighbor, you always have to go back to the neighbor. Okay, so there's a bunch of ways you can do it. Uh, let's say we have the C major seven arpeggio. It would be like this, note in the arpeggio, half step down, back to the note. Now listen while I do that just to the one chord in this 2-5-1. Now I did a couple of different things there. I'm not gonna go completely into depth because it is important whether that note is on the offbeat or on the downbeat, but I'm just gonna throw that out for now. Just make sure that the lower chromatic neighbor or the LCN resolves to the tone that it's a neighbor of. So now I'm gonna try an every arpeggio of the 251. <laughs> So now let's combine that with the melodic minor, a half step up from the G7 chord. So I'm going to do arpeggios of D minor 7 and C major 7 with the lower chromatic neighbor. And then I'm going to use the A flat melodic minor to produce some G altered sounds. Okay, so hopefully you're sitting and going like, okay, now that's kind of starting to sound like jazz. I mean, if it was 15 times faster. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you have to get these things down slow. And again, the hardest thing is really negotiating sort of the, the fingerings of these things. Okay? So just to review really quickly, we have a 2-5-1 in major. Our choices for playing altered sounds over G7 were to play the one chord minor scale. You can go up a half step and play the melodic minor scale, and also using the lower chromatic neighbor on any of the arpeggios in there. 
Okay, everybody, that is a ton of material. Let it take time and soak in and go really slowly. And of course, five patterns of all this. And if the audience cannot understand what you're playing, then you're not there yet. You have to be able to execute these notes cleanly and then you can start putting emotion into it and moving around the neck and really playing what you want to play. All right, everybody, I'll see you next time.